Hello Health 230 students, this is Brian Clark and today I will be lecturing on chapter number 19. This is lecture one of two. So I will be breaking this down into two 15 minute segments. Uh, considering that most of you are already registered nurses and um, are planning on working on your BSNs, I am going to skip over the information on the first couple pages there that tell you what prescription drugs are versus what over-the-counter medication is and um, the information on generic drugs. I feel very sure that you know what that is and if you don't, um, you need to read that information. And we'll start here. Risks from medications. Um, there is a litany of risks. There's, there's side effects. There are drug interactions. Um, and so oftentimes people do not fully understand the risk that goes along with putting a pill in his or her mouth. And it is your responsibility to be able to convey that information. Um, Oftentimes, these risks are revealed during clinical trials. However, that's not always the case because uh, in clinical trials, we oftentimes don't see people taking a significant number of drugs. And in our society, oftentimes that's the case. You see people taking three, four, five, six, seven, if not more, prescriptions all at one time. And once a person, once we see the drug, out in um, out in common use, we start seeing some of these side effects, or start start seeing how these drugs may negatively interact with each other. There are what's called drug drug interactions. Um, more often than not, we see one serving as an antagonist, and meaning that, um, that that the effectiveness of one drug is suppressed. However, that's not necessarily always the case. Sometimes. There is an amplification or a synergistic effect where one or the other drug, um, is, where the effectiveness of it is amplified. But uh, admittedly, more often than not, what we see is that the effectiveness of one, one drug is minimized. And it's worth taking just a moment and asking the question, you know, how does that happen? How, how in today's society can a person end up in a situation where he or she is taking two drugs that negatively interact with each other. And I will very emphatically tell you that it happens more than you think. Um, the nature of our healthcare system is such that the right hand does not necessarily always know what the left hand is doing. Uh, let me take just a very simple and common example. Um, say, for example, a woman goes to her OBGYN and uh, is prescribed birth control, an estrogen progestin combination pill, and that, that is the, the most com common uh, pill that is, or that's the most common form of birth control that is prescribed. And then that, that same lady does something like uh, goes to the dentist for an abscessed tooth, and the dentist, and first and foremost, she fails to disclose all the medication that she's on because she's thinking, oh, birth control, that's no big deal. That's not going to negative, negatively interact with anything that a dentist is going to give me for my teeth. And then a dentist prescribes an antibiotic, and um, antibiotics, they dramatically reduce the effectiveness of the estrogen-based pill. And then a woman in, ends up getting pregnant. Uh, that, that very clearly illustrates how there can be big consequences to a um, to a drug drug interaction, and that's just one of thousands of different uh, thousands of different drug interactions that can occur. So, uh, uh, I want to make the recommendation that that you all always uh, make sure that you are are diligent in getting people to disclose fully all the medications that they're taking and secondarily that you educate people about this risk. Uh, a, a good recommendation to make to patients is always go to the same pharmacy. Uh, if, if, if a person goes to Walgreens this week and go, goes to um, CVS next week 
there is the chance that they could be prescribed medications that have negative interactions. Um, but if a person is always going to the same pharmacy, usually pharmacies do a very good job of making sure to not prescribe medications that will negatively interact. So um, if you would put that one in your hip, your hip pocket and feel empowered to encourage your patients to always go to the same pharmacy. Um, medication errors. There is a an almost endless endless number of um, of methods or endless number of mistakes that can occur that ultimately cause a person to receive either the wrong medication or the wrong dosage. So I'm not going to go over you know, all the, the different types of errors that can occur. But what I am going to ask that you do is that you take a moment and you watch this video. Because the, the single most important thing that um, that can be conveyed to you as a clinician, as a future clinician, is diligence be diligent about what you are giving your patients and that diligence helps to minimize or alleviate those mistakes that ultimately or those mistakes that can happen so um, do me a favor and watch that video uh, if you are just watching this and you have not downloaded the PowerPoint you can go out to CNN And if you type in here, medication errors, and then let's look for videos, click on CNN videos. You can see the video there. Uh, it's titled Medical Errors and the Quaid, <clears throat> pardon me, Medical Errors and the Quaid Twins. Uh, do me a favor, watch that, and while you're watching it, really think about how your actions as a clinician can ultimately affect the health and well-being of the people that you're working with. Let's see if I can get the PowerPoint to come back up here. There we go. Uh, look over table 19-1. There, there's a list there of terms that are prohibited in clinical documentation because they can very easily be mistaken or confused with other meanings. So um, make sure to look over those. You're going to be learning more about those in your nursing classes. Um, something else to think about is the risk that goes along with um, with a pregnant woman or lactating woman uh, taking a medication or taking herbal products uh, because not only is there a risk to the mother but there is also a risk a risk to either the fetus and or the baby and of course children uh, it's, it's making recommendations for children is, is really rough um, and it's it's very important that that uh, the parents understand that they follow doctor's orders as it relates to uh, to prescription medication because the size of a child uh, very specifically determines how much of a given drug that a a child should take so um, emphasize to your patients to be very very attentive to doctor's orders as it relates to medication and um, and just recommendations in general for children. Now here's where I want to spend some time uh, about I've seen studies that show that about one-third of Americans take herbal supplements. That is an enormous number and there is a very distinct risk that goes along with taking herbal products. Uh, here's a study that your your text references. In 2004, a study found that of 61,000 
basically 61,000 older adults that one-third of them used herbal or specialty supplements um, such as ginseng, echinacea, ginkgo biloba, garlic, and St. John's wort. Uh, look over table 19-2 and you'll see not only what some of the common uses are but what some of the adverse effects of taking those can be. And there's a there's a big issue with herbs because we just don't have a lot of good information about about how they work physiologically in the body, what the side effects are. Uh, there is very limited clinical data on herbal products. Um, you don't see studies largely funded for herbs. Uh, just does not happen when um, when you have a, uh, a pharmaceutical company like say Merck or Park Davis doing research you know, they're not doing research on on herbs they have they're, they're using very finite amounts of chemicals in a very specific packaging method and um, you, know, you can you, know, you can feel pretty good that actually very good that um, that when they do their clinical trials that they are testing a very specific amount on a uh, on a population a, a known population we don't have those types of, of studies done with herbs or at least not um, at least they're not common now there is this organization called the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine and they have started funding some some larger scale controlled trials of several popular herbal treatments. However, uh, what this organization is doing still pales in comparison to the the money, the, the literally billions upon billions of dollars that are spent in research and development for um, for prescription medication. So, if you are planning on being uh, a clinician working in a doctor's office or a hospital or a clinic, uh, you need to understand very clearly that there is a, a a perception of herbs by the medical community at at large, and quite frankly, it's that uh, it's not a good option when you have uh, drugs on the market that have had the level of testing that is required by the FDA for them to become a prescription medication um, taking an herbal supplement that where, where you may or may not even know exactly what you're taking um, seems a bit silly let's see how much time I had left there Uh, one additional item I want to touch on before we move on, and I'll let you look over these slides on your own. Um, yeah, here we go. Uh, this comes from your text. Um, a study that was done on the safety of herbal products. Um, they tested 251 products imported from Asia, and as you can well imagine, most of these products are packaged in China. 10% of them contained lead, 14% contained arsenic, 14% uh, contained mercury. Yeah, that Those are big numbers and, um, and, and scary numbers. And in general, we just don't know exactly what we're taking when we're taking herbal products because they're, they're, they're not regulated. And um, there's a saying that I I live by as it relates to, um, to 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 getting people to do what they're supposed to. Uh, what gets measured gets done, and outside of that, I find that um, if if you're not measuring, if you're not um, in some way quantifying the amount of work that someone is doing and quantifying the quality of the work that someone is doing, chances are that the quantity and quality are, are not very good. So um, be very 
leery, be very cautious, and cautious your patients about using herbal products because the reality is more often than not they can do more harm than good. Uh, thank you for your attention.